agree with what Cindy just said. Uh, both research papers and uh, research projects uh, they have conducted have addressed uh, very important, interesting issues um, on human capital development and education in China. And um, both papers, research teams have uh, done careful studies collecting data using rigorous methodologies to uh, reach um, uh, their conclusions. So I think this is a very good example for students who are interested in empirical studies, who are interested in issues in China. Uh, it's a terrific uh, example. Um, in addition, the two papers, two research projects, um, essentially uh, point to similar uh, common implications, issues that we, we just uh, discussed, uh, Scott just presented. So that should uh, deserve a lot of attention among many observers, policymakers uh, in the related area. Um, so um, let me just start with uh, the uh, paper, the project by uh, Professor Ni Haijun. Um, it's a very impressive um, uh, task. It takes the challenge to construct, uh, as he said, a comprehensive measurement of a human capital stock uh, in China. And um, this is uh, no easy task. So um, one thing the um, adopt, given these three different approaches available in the economics field, he uh, used this um, what called lifetime income approach. So the basic idea is uh, simply as follows. Think about human capital as um, some kind of um, gold mine or oil field that uh, you own or any kind of assets you own. At any point of time, you're trying to decide whether to sell this asset. And what will be a benchmark pricing that uh, you would like to set? Well, it depends on how much uh, income streams you could uh, uh, derive if you have uh, continued to own the assets for many, next many years. Okay? So, so essentially, you would like to calculate uh, net present value of the income streams over next many periods, uh, or lifetime income stream. Um, you, you, so you need to uh, know the income streams. You need to predict income streams if you don't have one. Okay. So this is a method proposed by Jorgensen and, uh, for many, uh, many years ago. Um, when this method was used for the U.S. data, uh, fortunately enough, um, uh, U.S. has uh, available income data across different age groups, from young age, middle, and uh, old age. So you could use the current observable old age income to predict, uh, let's say, my income at age 59, um, adjusted by uh, natural or, or income growth rate, and discounted by uh, some discount factor. So, so in that sense, we need to estimate income streams, we need to estimate discount factor, as well as the gross rate of the income. Those are the three uh, basic elements. Uh, unfortunately, when this method is applied to uh, Chinese case, as Haijun uh, mentioned, uh, income data are just very incomplete. It's just essentially, you don't have a, a lot of information. So one of the innovation, I think the, the big part of the innovation of this project is to use another method to estimate the income. Uh, this is basically uh, based on the, uh, uh, the, the typical approach that used in the economics field to estimate returns to education. So that, that is, uh, you use survey data or some other valuable data to estimate returns to education uh, as a function or in, in uh, uh, that, you know, how returns to education can be explained by education level, working experience, and so on. So that's the key uh, equation that they used. So uh, they did manage to get, um, I think, a, a household survey data from uh, uh, 1986 to 1997, uh, urban uh, a sample of uh, urban population. So they used that to, as, a, as, a, as a base to estimate the, uh, the, the income, to predict the income. Once that is done, then you can do a lot of things. You can um, basically uh, calculate the uh, income, predict the income at the national level, or you can do it by region, provisional level, which I think they have been trying to uh, do that. And you can divide the sample by um, 
in gender, so you can work on uh, male-female uh, human capital specifically. And uh, you can actually work on, uh, you, you can um, calculate human capital stock for a particular sector. I, I think some of the uh, sectors, uh, including the Minister of Education, would love uh, them to uh, work on this, uh, this project. So, so uh, to me, this is a fascinating project. It's a big enterprise. I think Haijun has managed to assemble a large group of people in the Central University to conduct this project, and uh, it's ter terrific. Um, you have seen some of the major conclusions over there, so I will not uh, repeat here. Um, let me just uh, say that uh, uh, although estimating income, predicting income separately is a big part of the innovation of this project, um, and at the same time, given the limitation of the data available, the household server data, uh, I think there is a trade-off here that uh, the, uh, I think the probably need to think about. That is, uh, when you uh, apply this uh, sample of of data to estimate the individual income and they use that to uh, uh, predict the income, individual income at the national level, um, essentially you have a, a large uh, variance here. You get, uh, you, you, you get uh, many different uh, people in, the, in, in this sample that um, you know, cross regions, cross, uh, if you think about urban and the, and the, and the rural, uh, male and female, there are huge uh, difference. Um, but if you divide the sample into uh, subgroups uh, applied to a particular group, then uh, the sample size seems to be small, especially in the in earlier period of the, um, of the data set. So, so uh, I think uh, later on when we uh, have already have uh, more uh, survey data or other uh, source of data, maybe they could improve the uh, accuracy of the estimation. That's one thing as, a, as an outsider, I think that might be uh, something they uh, uh, should think about it. Um, also related to the income estimation, uh, in addition to education level and uh, uh, working experience, I, I'm wondering whether uh, professional titles uh, is an important issue here, as I think uh, Hongbin and uh, Aubrey may know uh, better. Um, because in the case of China, uh, even though you, you often observe, casual observations suggest that with the same education level and uh, same working experience, um, uh, different people tend to have uh, different titles for different reasons. So maybe uh, if we include that professional title in the uh, regression analysis, it will help improve the uh, estimation. Although, you know, a, a, a professional title is correlated with the other two variables. So uh, uh, I don't know, but that, that's a rather technical issue that uh, I thought uh, it'd be interesting to, uh, to um, address. Um, uh, let me uh, turn to discussing uh, the research project by, uh, by Scott, uh, and then I'll come back to uh, summarize the, the common, common issues. I think um, Scott has just, uh, you have seen, uh, just gave a wonderful summary um, uh, presentation about the issues, about uh, urban-rural gap, uh, particular education, health, and, and so on. Um, but much of the results he presented towards the end is based on careful, des carefully designed um, randomized control experiment method to test to what extent um, nutrition or nutritional intervention could help improve health of uh, poor students or students in the poor uh, rural area and to what extent that could in turn help improve um, academic performance, such as mass test scores and so on. So it's, it's a very interesting project. I, I find it uh, very exciting. Um, the, the main result you have seen that is, uh, yes, the um, positive intervention, um, nutritional intervention, does give uh, uh, better health uh, uh, result, and which in turn give uh, positive uh, economic performance, OK? Um, one thing that, um, I mean, from here we can do a lot of the policy implications. One thing from reading the paper, I, I, I like Scott to uh, elaborate a little bit, is that uh, the first result seems to me is relatively significant. That is, uh, the, the uh, nutritional supplements, nutritional intervention did uh, help quite a bit to increase the, uh, the, the health uh, measurement. Uh, but the second result doesn't seem, doesn't seem to be that significant as compared to the first one. That is, uh, so when I look at the mass scores, um, the two groups, the supplement group and the control group, uh, the levels are similar. 
in the, and the beginning of the period. Both, have been, both scores have been increased toward the end of the period. Uh, the difference is not that much, so, so the question is how, how uh, there, might, there are other results that uh, could uh, help to uh, support this uh, second conclusion. Um, there are other technical issues regarding regression, uh, which, which we can uh, discuss uh, afterwards. But let me uh, come back to the, um, uh, the common issues that are addressed by both projects. I, I think uh, uh, they, they both point out that, uh, along with the sessions yesterday by uh, Professor Albert Park and uh, uh, Ni Hong Bin, uh, they all point to the same issue, that is uh, there's a huge gap between urban and rural area in terms of education, human capital development. And this gap seems to be getting uh, wider, wider and getting worse. So, so furthermore, there's uh, uh, brain drain issues between the urban and the, uh, and, and the rural areas. So as Scott mentioned, what can we do about it? I, I think um, uh, it, would be, it would be good if somebody could summarize these four papers, so four research projects, and, uh, and write a, a policy article. I, I, I suppose Clay, where we can take that uh, leadership and uh, uh, after the conference, or even uh, include other presentations. And uh, these are just great issues. I think uh, um, Chinese government or Minister of Education should uh, pay more attention, and uh, not 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 just uh, more funding, which I think uh, by w uh, one speech recent by uh, Hu Jintao. Um, uh, did mention that uh, in the next uh, five-year plan, the 12th five-year plan, uh, the Chinese government will spend uh, four to five percent of the GDP on education. So that's uh, a great source of money. Uh, the question is how that money will be allocated to higher education or, or elementary education and so on. I also noticed that uh, the Chinese government has been using all sorts of programs to attract talent from other overseas, United States in particular, to go back to China to work, like the uh, Southern Scholar Program, uh, Changjiang Scholar Program, and so on. Provisional governments have been doing that. So this issue, or brain drain issue from uh, China to the United States and other countries, is very similar to the brain drain issue from uh, countryside, rural area to urban area. So, so in that sense, uh, uh, the, the uh, regional governments, municipal governments, and, and uh, county level and, and so on, uh, there might be policy designs such as this kind of programs would help uh, um, uh, minimize this uh, issue. And uh, perhaps there, 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 there are other issues to improve the nutrition, such as I just learned uh, last week that uh, in uh, Beijing and Tsinghua University, students uh, get subsidized for their meals and so on. It's coming from the municipal government. Uh, definitely, uh, I think the local government, regional government can, can do uh, a lot of uh, things like that. Um, anyway, I must say I have very much enjoyed uh, uh, reading these papers and uh, listening to the presentations. Uh, thanks very much.